Y'all help me say it this morning. Come on, come on. Jesus, come on here. To Calvary, to save a wretch like you and me. Like you and me, that's love. I don't hear nobody. That's love. That's love. Come on, y'all help me say it. Help me say it. Say, Jesus went, Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary. To Calvary. To save a wretch. Like you and me. That's love. I can't hear about the overflow. I can't hear about the overflow. Let me see y'all sing it overflow. Come on. One more time, Jesus went to Jesus. Come on, the Calvary. To save a wretch. Like you and me. I said, that's love, that's love. That's love. Oh, they hung him high. Come on. They hung him They stretched him high. wide. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. He hung his head. For me, he died. For me, he died. Come on. Yeah. That's love. It is Easter. It's Resurrection Sunday. Y'all help me say, that's love. Come on, 
take 15 seconds to give God praise for that hammer ringing. When I was a boy, I thought East was all about new clothes, East Egg Hunt, and having to learn a speech. But the older I get, the more I appreciate that what it's really about my salvation being purchased. Him loving me when I didn't deserve to be loved. Him being faithful to me when I was unfaithful to him. And if you're a recipient of the love of God in this room or watching online, take a moment and give God a, a thank you, Jesus, praise. Nobody should have to pump you and push you. You ought to be thankful. It's Resurrection Sunday. You ought to be thankful. I'm going to give you glory on and pray. God and we give you thanks for shedding your blood for us mm. we thank you for cars we thank you for careers thank you for cash thank you for companions and cribs and creature comforts but today we thank you for Christ Lord, this, the clothes we wear go out of style. The car we drive will soon need repair. Lord, but salvation is going to last forever. And that's reason enough to give you praise. We thank you that your grace and your mercy are everlasting and your truth endure to all generations. And we've gathered here on this Sunday morning to give you the glory to give you the honor and to give you praise because without you we wouldn't be here help us to celebrate and never take Calvary and this weekend for granted my God help us to not become so casual with your blood and your sacrifice help us to not need checks in the mail to help us to not need a boo or bait and make us really appreciative but when we think about Calvary and what you did for us we help us to be more appreciative and more thankful and more grateful. Now bless us during this time of sharing. Thank you for Calvary. And thank you for Resurrection Sunday. And we give you praise now. And we give you glory now. We give you praise and we give you glory now. In Jesus' name. Come on, take a moment and just clap your hands for the Lord and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm so excited that you're here. I'm E. Dewey Smith, and I'm just thankful and privileged that you've taken a portion of your day to share with us here. Certainly, God is blessing us right now, and we're just blessed to have this opportunity to share. And I want you to help us get the message out about this daily dose of hope. That we want to serve to the world. Why don't you call a friend, call a relative, call a neighbor, call an associate, and let them know that House of Hope, E. Dewey Smith, that we're on the airwaves on today. It's going to be an amazing time of sharing. To everybody who's tuned in today, whether it be Apple TV, Roku, Twitch, Amazon, Fire TV, YouTube, uh, 
Facebook, the various websites, however you've tuned in, thank you for your viewership on today. It means the world to us. I want to thank everybody who supported us. We made it into the second quarter of 2024, and we had an amazing first quarter of our, in our ministry. Those who worshiped with us on Sunday, whether it was in person for our two services or whether you tuned in um, uh, were, were, were you in person or whether you tuned in live online, we are excited and blessed that you are enjoyed Resurrection Sunday with us. You know, the Bible tells us if Christ be not risen from the dead, then our faith is in vain. And we do know that the resurrection is the crux of the Christian faith. And so I'm thankful for all of you who are able to be a part of our worship experiences on this past Sunday, whether in person or whether online. Thank God for you, 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 and you. What a blessing it is to have you. Listen, I'm excited uh, just to have this opportunity to come and share with you on the day. Um, our theme for this month, we're talking about April showers and spring showers. And uh, we know what's associated with spring and the showers of spring and what all is represented there. Uh, this is uh, what a great metaphor. When we talk about uh, the showers of spring and uh how that coincides with the month of April actually being a uh, national stress month. Uh, isn't that ironic? April showers, national stress month. And we know that it is a time that brings with it just a host of, of stressors and the things that may trigger stress in the lives of people, whether it's uh, handling your tax obligations, whether it's preparing for exams, whether you're anxiously awaiting final grades, whether it's significant graduations, whether the excitement, the cost of prom, first quarter layoffs, uh, there are just, whether just the, the normal everyday living process, you know, trying to keep up with the cost of living, uh, a lot of stressors uh, can accompany this season. And, and we talk about uh, transitioning from the harsh winters into the life and the greenery of spring. Uh, it, it promises the bloom of spring, but uh, this is a time of showers. And so it's very almost um, dichotomous to a certain extent when you think about the promise of spring, but the showers that are also associated with it. And uh, But we can't get to the beauty of summer and, and the, the beauty of the foliage on the trees and the leaves without going through spring showers. And so this is a very, very good time because I believe that even when there are spring showers uh, that God can provide us with umbrellas during this time. I want to just jump in here because when I when we, when we think about spring showers and being National Stress Month, I want to just for a moment keep it in context of resurrection since we just celebrated the resurrection of Jesus this past Sunday. And I, I thought about how even so many of us with life and the promises of joy and the promise of power and new life being in this season, how even during the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you see that there were still people dealing with significant stressors and moments of stress, I believe, an emotional challenge, even on the cusp of resurrection. You know, that's a passage in the Gospel of St. John that deals with two such occasions that really come to mind here. One, uh, the resurrection narrative shows how Peter and uh, John went to the sepulcher uh, early while it was yet dark, and they went there. Um, a little different narrative, a different ver version from the, other, from the Synoptic Gospels, but in John 20, uh, it shows how Mary Magdalene goes to the sepulcher. She gets there early. And uh, when she got there, she saw that the stone uh, had been rolled away. And so she runs and, and uh, she, she saw that uh, she got to Simon Peter and, and John, the disciple who Jesus loved. And she says, hey, listen, they've taken away the, the body of our Lord and we don't know where he is. And so Peter went and the other disciple, they ran together. And uh, John outran Peter and they came to the sepulcher. They, they came to the tomb. And uh, and and he looked, stooped down. And John twenty five says, looking in and saw the linen clothes lying. Yet John went not in. So John got to it first, stooped down, looked in, and saw the clothing that Jesus had been uh, adorning when he at, after his crucifixion saw those clothes lying. Verse six says that Peter came after him, and Peter went in. 
So John looked in, saw the clothes. Peter actually entered into the tomb, entered into the sepulcher, and he saw those linen clothes and the napkin that had been about uh, the head of Jesus, uh, not lying with the linen clothes, but he saw it wrapped in, 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 in a place by itself, verse number 7 says. And then John goes in, verse number 8 says, after Peter. And, uh, and John goes in, came, and he saw it. And yet, as they knew not the scripture that he must rise again for the third day, then the disciples went their way into, into their own home. So they go in, but John says, but as of yet, they knew not the scripture uh, that the disciples went away even unto their own home. So they leave. I'm going to come back and get them later. But the verse that really intrigues me here is verse number 11. It says, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And I think that's just a very... Uh, interesting passage for a lot of ways. Uh, we, I commend her because she was there first. And we know the other narratives uh, of the gospel synoptic writers tell us that the women were there while it was yet dark. Uh, John records her being there by herself without Salome and, and the other, others. She's there by herself. But what got me, she finds Peter, she finds John. John runs ahead of Peter, looks in, sees the clothes clothes with, that Jesus had been adorned in. Peter goes in, sees the clothes, sees the napkin around his head on the other side. They leave, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. They, they leave. They didn't know the scripture, John says. But what gets me here, I want to talk about the first stresses in verse number 11. It says, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. I want you to capture the scenario. She's standing in front of resurrection but the showers of her tears are coming down her face. Um, because at this point, she's still, she's of the opinion that someone has taken the body of a Lord. And so she's weeping. Uh, these are not tears of joy. These are tears of anguish. And I think it's a, it's a great, great picture of how many of us, even in spring showers sometimes, that rather than celebrate our exit from the wintry blast of winter and to celebrate the promise of spring bloom and the promise of spring showers and how it signifies life and rebirth, and but yet we can be in a new season, in a new quarter, in a new chapter of our lives, but yet because of preconceived notions or our perception of things, we find ourselves just distraught. And how many people today, even on the cusp of resurrection, are like Mary? Instead of rejoicing in this season, we only see the, the, the tomb and we have the expectation. She's had, she hasn't looked in or gone in yet, but in her mind, because the stone has been rolled away, she feels defeat. And perhaps, Many of us are going into a new quarter and we're stressed by what we see. Things look like they won't get better for us. And many people are stressed. I had to ask myself the question, why? Why really is Mary stressed? She stood without, which I think is very interesting. Once you get, that's a very sequential type of passage, but she stood without. She stands on the outside. Uh, Mary does not want to yet face what she thinks is the inevitable. And how many people are stressed because of our inability to st we stand, our inability just to confront or to face what life has thrown our way? How many of us are right there at the place of victory, but yet because it does not look like it's victorious, it leaves us in a place of weeping? And maybe some of you are stressed today, and the answers that you need to your dilemma have already been provided. But but maybe trauma, maybe agony, maybe your expectations, maybe the lack of faith has you like Mary standing on the outside without, right in the face of your greatest miracle, right in the face of the greatest moment of victory in your life. Sometimes our inability to just face what it is. I wonder if Mary had gone into the tomb to see the linen clothes lying. I wonder what kind of reaction she would have had. I wonder if it would have ignited 
her memory where Jesus said, they may tear the tabernacle down, but in three days I'll build it. But she stands on the outside because she's stressed. And, and I don't know who you are, but I will just tell you, when the Lord opens the door for you, by faith, you got to walk into it. Don't stand on the outside of the opportunity. Uh, there's an open door. The stone has been moved. But Mary doesn't want to confront it. I, I wonder if, why was, why was John and Peter able to go in? Maybe their lack of joy, maybe she noticed their faces. Uh, because John is clear to say they didn't know the scripture about him rising. Maybe, maybe she's weeping because she saw a negative expression on Peter and John's face. I'm going to talk about them in a moment. But maybe she's affected by her environment. Maybe because she couldn't confront it. Maybe because she saw some type of defeat as Peter and John leave to go back to their homes, wherever they were going. Why is Mary weeping? Is she weeping because of the fear of the unknown? Is she weeping because of preconceived notions? Is she weeping because of a lack of faith? Is she weeping because she's seen the environment and the response of Peter and John? Have her emotions caused her to weep because her feelings are not based on fact or faith? And today, as we as as we are facing and as we are on the cusp of resurrection, just three days from commemorating the resurrection of Jesus, my question to you today is how many of you still feel with tears when the power of Jesus Christ is made available to you? He said, and uh, and and in and, and Matthew 28, 16, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And so therefore I want you to go ye therefore and teach all nations. The power of resurrection was not just for Christ. It is also for those who are believers. And I wonder how many of us, the opportunities the Lord has provided, doors that have been opened, the stone has already been removed. But our lack of faith, our refusal to confront the unknown or what may be the thing that causes us fear, maybe our lack of knowledge about the scripture, maybe the responses of others has caused us to stand on the outside and not walking in the joy and the power of resurrection. Are you stressed because of your inability to confront things? Are you stressed because you don't want to face it and so you're practicing avoidance? Was Mary standing without, on the outside because she just couldn't confront? She didn't want to go get the test to see. She knew something was going crazy in her body, but she, she didn't want to go and get herself. I mean, if you let me contextualize it. How many of us feel something is wrong, but we just rather not know? The fear of the unknown, the fear of what we may find out, and, and the inability to step into it and to confront it may be the thing that's causing more stress in your life. Have the test done, my brother. Go get your prostate check. Rather than being fearful of what may happen, practicing avoidance does not bring victory into your life. People say things like, I'm just not going to claim it. Not claiming it does not change the reality of what's happening in your life. James Baldwin once said, while it is true that everything that is faced can't be fixed, it is also true that nothing can be fixed until it is faced. Maybe Mary is stressed here. If you let me contextualize it, maybe she's going through a, a, a spring shower, if would, because of her inability to confront what was right in front of her. Maybe because she wouldn't walk in to see. The stone had already been removed and maybe her fear. Maybe she's allowed Peter and John's negative response, perhaps. Maybe their negative response. Maybe, maybe they are disheveled and wagabond. Maybe it's something about their response that has triggered tears. Maybe, obviously, they weren't exuberant. There, there's no conversation between Peter and John and Mary after they went and looked in. Maybe they all were filled with, with futility, which I think we will see in a, in a moment. But she stands without. And so today, what I want you to do as we're entering into spring, don't be like Mary and stand without. Don't stand on the outside to not believe that there's not power and deliverance available to you. Don't, don't, don't stand on the, on the cusp and the outskirts of spring not believing that a new season does not promise blessings on the virgin horizon. I want you to fully embrace spring, fully embrace the moment. Well, how do I do that? 
Well, you can do that simply because you made it through the through the through the difficulties of resurrection of crucifixion. You can do it because you've come through Good Friday. You can do it because you made it through the first three months of the year. You can do it because now you've already seen the green green leaves reappearing and life emanating. Vegetation is getting ready to, to germinate, germinate and produce a new crop. But if we stand on the outside of the opportunity that God has provided, and I think that's what's happening. So it's, a, it's an April shower for, for Mary. Uh, it's a spring shower, if you let me contextualize it. And while she's there on the outside weeping, obviously she's stressed. Um, you talk about a, 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 a personal day of stress. Maybe she's never been more stressed in her life the past three um, days. And you got to understand Mary Magdalene's history, the things that she has been delivered from. Um, the promise on, uh, on her horizon was all made possible because she met that field preacher from Galilee one day who changed her life. And some say delivered her from seven demons. Her entire life has been changed because she met the Messiah. Maybe she's wondering, would she revert back to where she was delivered from? Can you imagine all the things that was, that were going on in Mary Magdalene's mind? But she stands without, right in the face of resurrection, right looking at what represented victory. But because of her inability to go in, she stands without and she's crying. And maybe because of Peter and John's, maybe because of their lack of exuberance, maybe because of their lack of celebration. It is also added and aided to become another stress, uh, stress trigger for her. The Bible says that she's weeping. She stood without. She's weeping at the sepulchre. She wept. She stooped down. And now she finally decides to look in. Once, after first not having the strength to do it, secondly, after not being that for John and Peter's entrance, now once they've departed, she's weeping. She stoops. And she finally looks in. She's finally willing to look at it to look at reality, to look at what's in front of her, to face it. And as she looks in, what I love about this is she saw something that Peter and John obviously did not see. <laughs> and that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes victory is all about revelation. Because of the quality of her life, because of her faith, because she was the one to get there first in the John, in the Johanna narrative. When she looks in, she sees something that John never says Peter and John saw. She looks in and she saw two angels sitting. Amazingly, uh, uh, amazingly, there's no, there's no mentioning of the clothing that Peter and John saw. They saw the clothing and napkin that was around his head, but God gave her an epiphany, this theophilus appearance of two angels, one sitting where the head of Jesus was, the other sitting where his feet were. And she looks in and sees two angels inside the sepulchre, inside the tomb. And not only did God give her revelation, now God gives her conversation. And that's how God is. When you're willing to confront and face the thing that perhaps is causing you to your greatest degree of struggle, you'll be surprised about the things that God will reveal, about the things that God will show you. And now God has divine communication from the angels with Mary. I love this. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said unto them, she still is unaware. She says, because they have taken away the body of my Lord. I know not where they've laid him. And so now she's talking to two angels and going back. And she still has this idea, this aura of victory. Talking to two angels, seeing. And it's amazing how sometimes we can see something and automatically assume the negative. I believe one of the things that cause the stress in our lives is how the enemy is able to challenge and contaminate our perception. Perception has the ability to allow you to see a thing through the lenses of victory or through the lenses of defeat. Many people are stressed and often you can trace stress to perception. How a thing is perceived. Mary perceives that his body that, he, that the tomb has been robbed of Jesus. She does not perceive that resurrection has taken place, and that's why the tomb is empty. Mary perceived that these two angels are there because they're angelic pallbearers. 
She does not perceive that these are two angels who are here to make a divine proclamation, the first charismatic endeavor of the Johannine account of the resurrection of Jesus. And now she's talking to angels, and they're asking her a question. Why are you weeping? And she says, because they've taken away the body of my Lord. She still perceives that Jesus is dead. And maybe some of you are stressed right now because you, you look at what you're facing and you think that you serve a God who's powerless over your circumstances. Maybe that's why we're stressed, because we look at the realness of real situations, but then reduce the power of God in our lives. Maybe if we look at everything through the lenses of resurrection and the power of God, maybe that will help us to re 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 reduce and release some of the stress. We're going to talk about some more practical ways this month to deal with stress because stress is real. But I just want to say to us that, that when we think about resurrection, resurrection for the Lord and resurrection for us should change the way we should look at life through the lenses of resurrection. And, and while she's talking to those angels, while she's talking to those angels, I love this. Jesus said unto her, verse number 15, woman, why weepest thou? It's amazing that the same question was asked twice to Mary Magdalene. Woman, why weepest thou? The first one was Ray asked by the two angels. The second was asked by Jesus. Jesus says, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And now it says, she's supposing him to be the gardener, which is very interesting because Mary knew the voice of Jesus. And I want to talk about this because I think it's a very, very important principle. It's amazing how sometimes stress and pressure can dull your hearing in so much that you can't recognize the voice that has brought you calm, peace, and victory in times past. One of the things the enemy wants to do to us is not just rob us of revelation, but also mute our inability to hear the voice of God. Because how is it that Mary, who has followed Jesus, who's been delivered by Jesus, who's having the first post-resurrection conversation with Jesus, and yet she does not know and does not recognize his voice. And sometimes we go through so many challenges, so many, so many things that are chaotic that we can't hear the voice of God in those challenging moments. And the Bible says that even though she heard his voice, she supposed him to be the gardener. And that lets us know how enormous stress can be. Stress can be so bad that you can't even recognize God when God is talking to you. Stress is so bad if you're not careful that it, it can become so voluminous and the sound uh, and, and, and the feelings of the waves and the winds can become so voluminous that we can be staring victory in the face and can't receive the victory that he brings. And the Bible says, and then she asked a question, sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him. I will take him. Now she's talking to the gardener as if he's God. <laughs> and Jesus finally turned and said, Mary. She turned and said unto him, Rab Rabboni, Rabboni, which is to say master. And so Mary, once she gets that second, once she heard her voice, once there was something about the voice of God, hearing from God, consistently she didn't recognize it the first time but she heard the voice she kept talking she kept talking even when she didn't understand and that second conversation when he called her name she finally was able to get the understanding that he was not dead any longer and the bible tells us that it was mary magdalene verse 18 who was the one who went and told the disciples everything that, the, that she'd seen the Lord and everything that he had spoken unto her. So even though she struggled initially, the disciples in the Johanna account got the message about the resurrection from Mary Magdalene. I love this because you see the, the progressive nature of her growth. I love it because, and I think it's a very, very powerful, you can be delivered from seven devils previously. You can have a previous, previous experience with the Lord. But just because you've been delivered and have a previous experience from the Lord does not mean that stress can't be real in your life as well. 
I don't care who you are, how much time you spent with God. All of us have the ability to be affected and negatively impacted from stress. She had every right to be stressed. She's a human being. But it's how we manage and how we handle stress that determines victory from defeat. And so I, 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 I want to just look, look at her today, and I'm going to talk about even next week uh, how even the disciples later, even they were stressed right in the face of her. So, so, so not only does, so Mary in this text experiences her own spring shower. It's one of, it's one, again, it's dichotomous because it's one, where you see the emotion of, 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 of a vicissitude, but you also see it, it changing the victory. And I, I like the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 26. Ezekiel prophesies about something that's really metaphorical and powerful, though not only the ancient nation of Israel, but I think something that we can apply to our lives. I will make them, and the places all around my hill of blessing, I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessings. So that's Ezekiel 34, 26. So showers, you can look at something and see the negative part of it. Many of us look at showers the exact same way that Mary initially looked at the empty tomb. But, 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 on, the, but on the other end of that spectrum, the second time she was able to see it, the back end of her narrative at the tomb, she's able to hear the voice of God and become the first post-resurrection evangelist in the Johannine account of the Gospels. We'll talk more about it next week. But how those showers on one side were, were developmental, and on the other side, it allowed her to walk into a destiny. And so uh, Zechariah 10.1, uh, the prophet says, Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. That's Zechariah 10 and 1. And so I want to I tell you that, that, that showers are difficult. Showers are challenging. Stress is real. Uh, as I said to you earlier, Mary had a reason to be stressed. Her Lord and her Savior had been crucified. Mary, Mary, Mary is struggling with the idea. John, John says that they really didn't understand the whole principle of resurrection. Mary was struggling. And so I don't, I don't want you to think I'm here to minimize stress or, or minimize those moments. I, I, I'm just simply saying that there's another lens, another way we can look at showers, that even Mary's experience here, here's one, a couple of things, uh, a couple of things. Showers come from above. Showers have a divine origin. God controls the showers, even though Satan is the prince of power of the air, but I like how Job 5.10 says he provides rain for the earth. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. So showers can be, I use showers here metaphorically, showers can be, they, they, they can be divine. Uh, I also want to say that showers can be developmental. I mentioned that earlier. I like that passage in Mark chapter 4 when Jesus told the boys to get into the sea of Godar and get in the boat. And he said in verse 35 of Mark 4, let us pass over into the other side. And when they were coming to the ship, the Bible says, and there rose that grows a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And Jesus in the hinder part of a ship asleep on a pillow. Now he had just told them, let us pass over into the other side. And now the storms are raging. If you let me use that metaphor, the showers are raging in the lives of the disciples. And Jesus, in his humanity, goes down to sleep in the hinder part of the ship. And the disciples, several of them who were skilled fishermen, who were not in any way, should have been uh, um, experiencing trauma through the storm. Storms were were, 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 were were regular occurrences for fishermen. So that tells you the nature of the storm. Jesus in the height of the ship was asleep, and they awake him and say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? That beautiful passage that he gets up, and, and the Bible says, he says, peace be still. And then he says, O ye of little faith. That whole experience for, for those disciples seeing those showers, it was developmental. He had just talked to them about the parable of the seed 
and the sower, how some fell on good ground, some fell on stony ground. He just said to them in verse 35, let's pass over to the other side. And so it is as if the Lord allowed this shower to come, this storm to come, and the waves to beat, to see would they trust. They even see him asleep, which means he's not struggling. Sometimes showers come from the divine, but they have a development. Sometimes the showers come to test what we really have heard, to test how much we've really grown. Sometimes the showers can come to push us to another level of glory, to see how much more we're, are we really ready for another level. All right? And so showers, uh, showers, they come from the divine. Showers uh, can be developmental. Here's another one, verse number three. Showers don't discriminate. I said showers don't discriminate. Uh, Matthew 5, 4 to 5 says that he calls it the rain rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. The showers can bless the just and the unjust. So the reality is there's no discrimination efficacy. We all, Job said a man, one of a woman is of a few days and those few days are full of trouble. There's no discriminatory practices with showers. Get who you are, how old you are, how long you've been in the kingdom. Showers do not discriminate. So think it not strange, Peter says, concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened. We all will face them. Don't cry, woe is me. The strongest, the weakest, the, the, the best, the worst. We all will have to endure certain types of showers in our lives. Whether they're stressful events, graduation, promotions, terminations, they can bring blessings and they can bring challenges into our lives. And so these showers, right? Showers are from the divine. Showers can be developmental. Showers don't discriminate. But showers are also clearly defined they're defined they, they they the season of them is definite what do i mean by that they're seasonal they're timely to everything there's a season god waters the mountains from his upper chambers i love this because every cloud will inevitably run out of rain you know i, I love it when when paul says uh for our light affliction which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So even the most difficult moment in your life, it won't last always. I love that in light of Mary's life because, yes, Mary Magdalene, she's experiencing major trauma right here in, the, in this garden. Even though Peter and John went in first, I shared with you some nuances of perhaps why she still without weeping but yet even Mary Magdalene inevitably was able to get through that season of her spring and those showers and those difficulty but the blessing is on the other side of that coin is the struggle that she endured while at this tomb is the thing that God flipped so she became an evangelist a woman who became healed of seven devils. Some say she was perhaps a, a harlot in her private previous days or a prostitute. She became a proclaimer. The one who was filled with demonic, a demonic spirit, seven devils perhaps, is the one who has to go and try to get fear out of the disciples. And so while you're watching today, I want to share some things with you. There are so many people who are stressed out now. Uh, a team gave me some, some statistics that suggest that there are people who are reporting that just paying for common essentials is stressful. 58% of 18 to 34-year-olds believe that just paying for essentials is stressful. 67% of people 35 through 44 believe that. Ages 45 to 64, 62%. 80 to 65 up. 53% of them say just paying for essentials is stressful, right? Money is a significant stressful, a stressor, 82% people. Health-related stressors, 82%. Money, the economy, housing costs, 
These things are significant stressors in the lives of the people. We're going to talk more about this as we go along. But what I want to say to you, I don't want you to look at stress through the lenses of sociology, through the lenses of psychology. I want you to look at I want you to look at stresses and spring showers through the lenses of theology. And what that means is God has already given us victory. He's already overcome death, hell, and the grave. And so he says, in this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have already overcome the world. And so since he is of good cheer, you can be of good cheer. Even in this post-pandemic, pre- and post-pandemic world, uh, 18 to 34 year olds, stress has increased uh, since the pandemic from 26% to 34%. Uh, from 35 to 44 year olds, it's, it's increased 10%, 10% in less than four years. From 45 to 64 year olds, stress has increased 4%. Uh, f- so stress is going up, all the societal factors. But I don't want you to be like Mary, standing on the outside, looking at life through the lens of defeat. See it through the lens of victory and know that God can give us a message even in our misery. And as you're watching today, I want you to know that we're going to be talking about these spring showers all month. But I want you to know that God has already given you an umbrella, his favor, his grace. You can make it through. And if you're watching today and you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, send a text right now. Information at the bottom of the screen. You can accept Christ right now. Just text the word salvation to the number 678-201-1351. Text it right now. Maybe you want to connect with this ministry. You can text the word connect to 678-201-1351. You can connect with this ministry right now. Or maybe you want somebody to pray with you, going through stress in significant ways. Our prayer team is here to serve you. Text the word prayer to 678-201-1351. And lastly, maybe you want to give. Maybe you've been impacted. Finances have you with your stress balls. And you, and you need something to help you work through the stress. Well, one of the ways you can work through stress financially is by giving, by putting God first in your finances. And if you want to be a blessing and you want to give, you can give today. You can give by text to give. The information is on the screen. By cash app. You can give through Zelle. If you're watching through the website, click the giving link and follow the, the prompts accordingly. If you want to send it through the P.O. Box, our P.O. Box is 361-499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Again, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 361-499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. My friends, I got to leave you now. But even in the midst of spring showers, showers are sent by the divine. Showers can be developmental. Showers, I said to you, uh, have, have, are definite, and showers don't discriminate. But even in the midst of the showers, God is a God that will keep you in the secret place. And no matter what's happening on meteorologically, the sun won't smite you by day, nor the moon by night. You can walk through the rain and through the fires and the rivers, and it shall not overtake thee. Be encouraged now. You can make it. Don't look at spring for the showers and difficult to look at it, that God has given it the rain of what you plant. And you can't be what God wants you to be. You can't flourish. Every plant needs some rain. Get ready to flourish. It's your time. Till next time, always remember this. If you'll be good to God, God will be good to you. See you then. Peace. Happy Resurrection Sunday, family. Yes, it is always a blessing to be able to celebrate our risen Savior for the ultimate sacrifice of his life. Oh, Chris, you said that like, I mean, you, that, you okay, I felt something a little bit. Yeah, all right. We'll get, we'll, hmm. Wellness Wednesdays is back, family. Now, we want you to come at 10 a.m. for physical wellness, then at 11 a.m. for our wellness education, and finally at 12 p.m. for our spiritual wellness, which is Bible study. Now, we've been talking about this all month, yes. so we really want you to participate if you can. Additionally, we are delighted to announce our partnership with Silver Sneakers, expanding the reach of our wellness program to a broader audience. Now, some of our own HOHA members are our new facilitators as a part of Silver Sneakers, namely, 
Anthony Williams, Christina Knight, and Tasha Warford. Each of them brings a wealth of expertise and passion to elevate the physical wellness experience on Wellness Wednesdays. Our Wellness Wednesdays also features diverse health experts who cover topics such as physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual wellness weekly. Courtesy of our esteemed community partners at 11 o'clock a.m. and at noon, join us for a light and healthy lunch while we wrap up Wellness Wednesdays with a noonday Bible study, strengthening both body and spirit. I like lunch. Just saying. Best of all, participation in all of the activities is free of charge. That's a, good, that's a good thing. Yes, we look forward to getting your wellness on. For more details, text wellness to 678 201 1351. And to our virtual Hope Global family, I wish I could hug y'all right now, but you're virtual, so I can give you kind of like a virtual hug. But we want to thank yeah. all of you for your responses and your signups. Now, we're sharing new content for our global church family and our virtual church. And to receive real time ministry updates, devotional content, ministry opportunities, we want you to scan the QR code that's on the screen right now. Sign up today so that we can live better together. And also for our online church family, we have various ways for you to keep you to keep you connected with us. So if you have prayer requests or need prayer, text the word prayer. If you'd like to join the House of Hope Atlanta as a member, text the word connect. And if you desire to be saved, text the word salvation to 678-201-1351. Well, we're done. This is quick. Oh, wow. You know, okay, good. Trying to get you back to this good service. Yes, now, yes. we want to wish you all another happy Resurrection Sunday. And until we meet again, remember that life with God is better in every way, every day. Be, Be blessed. blessed. Yes. Now, Crystal, it sounded like earlier when you were talking about, you know, our risen Savior and how he has just been so awesome and so so mighty and strong and, and powerful. I didn't and say all that, but yes, that's true. It just, that's what I, it, I heard. It, what it, it sounded like you said was, he got up uh, so I can get up. That's what I heard. Uh -huh. But you got a word for the people? You got something to say to them? Happy Resurrection Sunday. Be grateful and be blessed. That's, all, that's, that's all it. You, that's it. I thought you had like I a, said that's it. Because it sounded like no, you was about to. that is it. Give the word for the that day. And all. pastor the was going to get back to the service and let the people do what they do. All right. Well, she, don't, she ain't got, you ain't got no, ain't no power Glory. in that. We're going back to church. Thank you. Happy resurrection. <laughs> Happy Easter.